Okay guys, so this should be a simple video for most. I just kind of wanted to put this um, on my channel just so I can reference it when I'm doing projects. So if I'm using uh, using an editor, so Visual Studio Code is my editor, um, and I'm going to be able to gloss over adding JavaScript and CSS to um, a file so we can get, get going quicker on our projects. And I'm also going to link you to the GitHub so you can just download this and get going straight away. So I've just created a folder called Start Templates on my desktop, create it wherever you want, and just opened it up in Visual Studio Code. So I just dragged it onto my Visual Studio Code icon and it opens up like this. So the next thing we need to do is create our HTML file. So I'm going to right click and click New File and call this file index.html. This is a kind of a default standard name. Default standard name for um, HTML files. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to tell the browser that we are a HTML file. So we do that by using triangle bracket HTML, triangle bracket to close, and then I have autocomplete. You also need triangle brackets forward slash HTML to close the whole tag. You guys probably know this, so I want to try and rush through this bit quickly. Now, two main elements within the HTML tag, our head tag, so head and closing the head tag, and another element is our body tag. So just type body in our triangle brackets, and there we go. Now, generally speaking, head tag is all the invisible information data our page needs to do stuff and body is our visual and I'm saying this is mainly true because actually the first thing I'm going to show you isn't and there's a reason for that so in our head tag we can give ourselves a title tag and we can call it starter template let's call it now I have opened up my index file here in Chrome um, and you can just drag your index.html file from your folder structure uh, into Chrome and load it up. So now if I refresh here, you can see actually now at the top here it says start template on my tab. And that's getting it from here. And that's why I said, um, I'm just going to put this on the same line. And um, that's why I said that body is the visual stuff and head is the hidden stuff mainly because this is one of those cases where you kind of see it, but it's not actually on the actual window. It's not actually on the page itself. Now, making stuff visible on the page. So H1 for a heading, largest heading we have. Let's say Hello World or Jello. Yes, yeah, say Jello World. So we'll go Jello World. And if I save that and refresh, we have Jello World. Now, let's get adding those uh, external style sheets and JavaScript. So they need a place to live and it gets a bit messy if we just put them in the same folders index.html. So what is a usual use case is they live in a source folder or an assets folder. So I'm just going to right click new folder and I'm going to call our folder source. Then I'm going to right click again another new folder. I'm going to call it CSS. And it puts it in line for some reason with uh, Visual Studio Code now. Then I'm going to click on the CSS and I'm going to add my CSS file now. So if I right click, new file, style.css, and there you go. So you can see up at the top here, it's in the source folder, in the CSS folder, and then in the style.css is our file name. So let's link this file. The way we do that is we want it to be one of the last things in our head, if not the last thing. So how we link is we use our triangle brackets and we say link. Then we need to tell it what type of file it's linking. And it's linking, um, so we use that rel. We're linking a style sheet. And this is so the browser can process it. Um, then we need to give it reference to where that is. So we're going to say href equals 
um, and lives in the source slash CSS slash style oh, style dot CSS. Then we just need to close it off with a triangle bracket. Now, if I haven't done any typos, that should now link our file. But we won't know unless we style something. So we're going to style a h1 tag. It's called h1 curly brackets color red. Save that. If I refresh the page, we're gone red. So we know our style sheet is linked. Good. Jump back to our index HTML and we're actually going to jump back to our source folder. Right click on source, new folder. I'm going to add that JS folder. And again, right click on the JS folder, create a new file. Let's say main.js. Uh, index.js is a very common one as well. Um, and what we need to do is we need to link again from our file to, from our HTML file to our JS file. And we do this at the bottom of our body tag. And the reason we do that is because we're probably going to be, well, we're definitely going to be manipulating stuff on the actual body. So we might change the color of this to blue by JavaScript or something like that. So we need this H1 tag to have loaded before our JavaScript because if our JavaScript tries to grab this H1 tag and change it, but it hasn't loaded yet, it can't do that. So that's why we put it at the bottom of our body. And the way we link um, the way we link JavaScript is slightly different to style sheets. So we link it in a script tag. Let's say script. Then we say source. And then we're going to just give it the root path of where our source is. And you can see coming up is my IntelliSense here. It's a very good plugin. Um, and it just tells you where your paths are. It's an IntelliSense path, I think it's called. So we want to go source slash JS slash main dot JS. Then let's close that off. And we need to add the closing script tag on that. Now let's save that. Go into our main JS and let's actually use an alert. So we can see that it's working. So again, Jello World is what we're using today. Jello World, and if I save that and refresh our page, we should see an alert pop up. There we go, Jello World. We can click OK. So now we know we have main file, style file working in our index. Um, so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to add a couple more things. Um, if I right click here and inspect this H1, I actually want to move up to the body. And you can, can you see this? It says eight pixels here, eight pixel margin, user agent style sheet. And this is Google um, adding eight pixels around it. And a lot of browsers do this, and a lot of browsers add their own little things that are slightly different. So a good thing to do is add something called a normalize, so normalize CSS or reset CSS. And... What that does is it brings all browsers kind of in line and gets rid of some of the silly stuff like margin around the body, which we don't want because we want to go right up to the edge, right up to the very top corners with our designs and stuff. So I'm going to show you how to use a CDN first. So I've got one up here, uh, right here. Oops, let's go back. So I just Googled, um, I just Googled normalized CSS CDN. It's like this very first one, and this is a very popular site. And we're going to go to the normalize.min, which is like a compressed version. Take all the white spaces have been taken out. Go to the little drop down arrow, copy link tag. And what CDN is, it's Content Delivery Network. So say you're in the United States and you want to um, serve this normalized CSS to everybody. Uh, you could do it from your own. Uh, your own server but if you're in Thailand maybe it's actually quicker to serve this normalized CSS from a CDN that is based in Asia maybe that's quicker so that's the idea on CDN is there's lots of distributions in different countries that may be closer to the user that they can grab hold of so we've used that copy copy link tag and we're going to paste it above our CSS 
because we want our CSS to be able to overwrite anything in this normalized CSS. Because uh, this is the this is our daddy of the files, let's say. This is this is boss man, boss man of all files. So now if I save this, I'm just going to comment out the JavaScript file just so we don't get that alert for now. And I refresh, look what Jello World does. You see it move. Because now it's been normalized. So if I right click here, what has happened is if I go to body, you can see margin zero here. So it's removed that margin. If I, I can switch on and off, you can see that's what it was doing before, right? It's adding eight pixels. So it's reset. So that's good thing to have. You should always have a reset in there. Um, and I also want to show you how you could actually put this file locally. So if we just grab this URL from inside the href tag, right to the .css, and I'm going to paste it in here. This is the file. This is the data, and it's minified. So let's copy all that raw data out. And we want to go in our JS folder. Let's create, oh, sorry, in our, S, in our CSS folder here. Right click, new file, normalize.css. Paste it in here. You can see the first bit's commented out. Then we have all the files, uh, all the, the gubbins, as we call it, all the uh, CSS. Give that save. Then we can remove that tag that we added, that CDN tag. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to copy the style tag again, paste it in here. It's still a style sheet, but we want to say instead of style.css, we want to say normalize.css. And then that will be loading in now. If I save that and refresh here, that is now loading in the normalize from our actual um, CDN, uh, from our actual local host. We're going to add a few things now that you probably won't really see, um, but you kind of need them on the page. So we need to tell our HTML, our actual web browser, I guess, what type we are. And even though we've done this in the HTML here, it's definitely good practice to add uh, exclamation mark doc type in capitals. Sorry, doc type HTML. Um, and that's saying the doc type, the document type is HTML. Um, I think you can get away with this now, um, but it's one of those things that you probably should be doing. And since we're making a start template, you've got it there. Now, the next thing is we want to also tell um, our browsers um, how to how to um, display our heights and widths, our viewports. So we do that with a meta tag. So we're going to say meta with a name equal to viewport. So we're basically saying, okay, the, the viewport, what we can see, the page, we want it to be able to set a zoom level and we want it to manage the width based on the device. I know that sounds a little weird, but we're going to say content equals um, the width is equal to the device width. Device hyphen width. And then we want to say within inside the, the content still, we want to say comma initial dash scale equals. Uh, 1.0 so it's like a default zoom level um, and just close it up so there you go so now on other devices it's going to let that device deal with its own width so you know mobile phones and things like that we're going to uncomment our javascript and we refresh we get an alert okay guys so very simple video um, it's, probably, it's probably not needed for most of you guys. So if you've watched along, great. I hope you've learned maybe a little bit about CDNs, maybe a little bit about how to organize which types of files come first. Um, and this is kind of the file, like I said, that I can reference back to if you need to get up, up and running quickly and you don't want to have to work, type all this in and you might forget how if this is a link or whether this is a, 
script or a source or whatever. So this is a great start file. I'm going to link it in the description for the GitHub. So you guys can just copy it from the GitHub also. Um, but again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we're really going to try and build this channel now. Um, so I'm just getting a few things out of the way, a few little videos like this out of the way, just so uh, we've got a nice base to kind of move faster and get you guys into maybe into jobs as developers. And, you know, it can change your life. It's changed mine. Um, it's not long, you know, it's... I haven't done this since I was 15 years old. You know, I, I was a later starter. So I know what it is to go through this process and how sometimes you just want to learn quickly. So hopefully this this little video will help us do that in the future moving forward. So thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, like, subscribe, do all the things. Um, I appreciate all of um, what you guys are saying. And thank you very much for watching. Cheers.